Good morning. I just received a request to do a video on unspecified connective tissue disease or UCTD. I'm not asleep, I promise. Just kind of chilling as you people say today. So, um, for me to explain and talk about an unspecified UCTD, unspecified um, connective tissue disease, I guess I first should tell you, you need to know what a specified connective tissue disease is. So what a rheumatologist named Steve Soloway thinks of when he thinks of a connective tissue disease, lupus, Sjogren's, rheumatoid arthritis, myositis, and scleroderma. I apologize, my eye is itchy. Seems like I have another issue in every video. Um, so in rheumatology, we don't have a test that says two plus two is four. So we have to rely on multiple things, including the patient history, our clinical decision-making, our experience. And after we take a history, after we examine the patient, we'll look to uh, blood test, x-ray, CAT scan, other testing, urine, and we'll try to formulate what makes the most sense. And what it boils down to is if you have a patient who's got chest pain, fever, rash, and whatever symptoms you want, you look at the blood tests, and if the blood tests are conclusive to the, uh, for example, if somebody has rheumatoid factor in A and A, it's very nonspecific. If somebody has rheumatoid factor in CCP, this is more specific of RA. If somebody has ANA and DNA, this is more specific for lupus. If somebody has rheumatoid factor SSA, SSB, more specific for Sjogren's. Somebody has ANA with SCL70, scleroderma. Somebody has myositis specific antibodies with rheumatoid factor or ANA, more specific for um, uh, myopathy. Again, provided everything fits into place with the uh, correct uh, history, the correct physical, etc. So, all right, let's take an example. Um, somebody has uh, joint pain, or somebody has low grade fever, or somebody has red eyes, or uveitis. Um, somebody has an unexplained rash, unexplained belly pain, unexplained chest pain. Well, the chest pain doesn't have to be unexplained. You can have pleurisy. Pleurisy is an inflammation of the lining of the lungs or, or in the heart, it's pericardial. Um, and these are very painful. Oh, I hope it's not painful watching me this morning. I'm tired but I've been inspired by a few people to put this video together right now. Ah, ah, ah. Um, so, all patients want to have a label. They want to have a diagnosis. Nobody wants to be walking around thinking, well, you know, I don't really know what I have. I want to just say I have lupus. I want to have rheumatoid. I want to have myositis. In reality, only 50% of people can actually have a true label. Now that doesn't mean that labels are not thrown around lightly and less experienced rheumatologist or incompetent uh, whoever's, you know I don't seem to hold back. So by the way, I'm gonna plug my next book. Uh, actually, I'm gonna plug my, my first book, Bad Medicine. Bad Medicine is uh, it's an excellent book, excellent by all standards. The next book, medical politics trench warfare is going to blow the lid off the bad healthcare system. Anyway, um, you cannot even pre-order it yet. It's not even done. So let's get back to a um, person who comes in with a rash, a fever, a little achiness, um, a little weakness. Well, maybe they have a flu, but it's going on for three weeks, six weeks, nine weeks and the patient's really getting concerned. You order the blood, and the blood comes back. The ANA is positive, 1 to 320 homogeneous. 
the rheumatoid factor is 1 to 20, the DNA is negative, the CCP is negative, the 14.3.3 ETA is negative, um, the sacroiliac joints are normal, the SSA is negative, the SSB is positive. Okay, what is this? Well, it can't be defined. So, they have all features of autoimmunity, both clinical features and blood tests. However, this is like saying, I have all the ingredients, but I don't have a pie. So I'm going to take the mix and I'm going to make pancakes instead of a pie. This would be unspecified groceries to make a high carbohydrate meal. So what I'm trying to tell you is that people do not always have a label and that's okay as long as the treating and diagnosing doctor understands how to explain and answer the questions and at the same time knows how to fight the insurance company to treat you in the most appropriate manner. So if your most problematic feature is joint pain, methotrexate was, is probably the, the most effective. If your biggest problem is uh, autoimmune type skin rash, maybe an anti-malarial such as Plaquenil would be your best choice. If you have life-threatening disease and it's unspecified, you're still going to give pulse steroid, cytoxan, maybe rituximab, maybe Celsep, maybe, maybe cyclosporin. These are all things to consider. And I'd like to, uh, maybe I'll save it for another video. I want to talk about the use of NSAIDs and steroids. All right, um, it's 8 a.m. on Friday. I hope everyone has a great weekend. Hope you enjoy the video. And remember, I'm supposed to tell you, you need to subscribe. And this way you hit the bell. And this way you can get notified when I make more videos. And for what it's worth, if you suggest a video, I'll make a video. The only problem I have is I don't know how to access the technology very well. So I'm reliant upon my staff. Thanks and have a good day.